today's session and this today's session um, today is 17th of august uh, 2024 and our topic of discussion is needs wants and desires versus spirituality session number 214 but we are one group session <coughs> And this we will discuss about um, that uh, several questions posted into the group by uh, Ronita. Ronita, you have posted these questions, right? Yes, I have posted the questions. Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, just to uh, like a, to make it as a question answer session. So I will like you to ask the questions one by one. Hmm? Then I will give this this answer uh, so that it will be easier for to understand that you have your questions readily available with you yes yes okay fine just go ahead with your with your questions then accordingly i will answer them one by one yeah. um so the first question is uh, in spiritual terms how do we define uh, needs wants and desires okay that's very good so this is uh, so we we are not going here with the literal meaning of all those things. So we will go into the spiritual context. How that does that mean? Yeah. Okay. So now um, for spiritual purposes, uh, everything needs, wants and desires. These are different uh, levels of our like a human um, requirement like we want we, we require something and these are the three things expressed in a different ways I, i'll come to spiritual uh, uh, you know spiritual connotation part a little later first let me uh, you know explain that what is uh, just in general what it means then i'll go to the spiritual part of it <coughs> needs are absolutely what we what we require <laughs> to survive in this, this world or also to protect ourselves for, you know, whatever the adversities it may create. So in that sense that it is the needs are just to how to protect our, the physical, physical body, physical position and thing like that. In this direction, we have uh, on this matter, we have discussed quite in detail about the, we have the four uh, principles of we are one, uh, you know, living principles in, uh, in this earth. The first one is protect physically. So we explain it in detail. So needs are basically oriented towards that, but we need something to survive, like uh, uh, something like we need to uh, eat food, to survive we we need to breathe the air to to survive and we need uh, like uh, for external world to survive in the society we need uh, roti kapra or makan yeah so these are the things like in the physical level because we are all having our physical bodies and this world is physical world to operate that we need something and that we need to run our physical body and also our to protect it so two parts of here one is running and another is protecting and this part comes exactly what uh, our the first principle of our we are one uh, operating principle so this comes and that this is a normal uh, i'm just giving the classification why we see the three classification then i come to the spiritual i am not explaining spiritual right now i'm just explaining general Wants are <clears throat> so. First one is a you know totally about that uh, we minimum requirement to survive into this world because that is the basic thing you need. Now all of us we uh, live in the uh, duality. I like dislike. You know, um, um, like. Uh, um, like we have some kind of preferences and we have some choices. <clears throat> this comes with our free will. 
So free will has been given to us as a part of our normal existence onto this planet Earth. Out of free will, we have some choice. You know? And because we have a free will and we have a choice, then we have a like-dislike. Hmm. So this kind of thing. And love and hate and this kind of, it's a part of the duality, the duality we live in. From there, the want comes. Like we want certain thing and we don't want certain things because it comes from the duality. We like something <clears throat> and we think something is right. Uh, so right and wrong is there. So all those things. So whatever as per our understanding, uh, we prefer, we want. In one means this is the want, what we prefer to have. Hmm. So out of many choices, if you have certain, um, you know, more preferable choices, those becomes our wants. We want them. So this is about uh, like out of options available we, we, we because of how we have a free will and that we, based on that, we have, we have a preference on something. There is here in overall, if you see, um, uh, like I'm giving a little bit of uh, spiritual uh, connotation, but just to understand that overall, if you see, these are all available things at the given moment, but we have certain affiliation or preference to something that becomes our one. Okay. But from the spiritual thing, it is all options. You have the options. You know? So, <clears throat> so somebody wants to uh, have a preference, uh, want to have certain kind of food. They want to visit some places. They want to have a better relation with somebody and they don't want to get that kind of relation with somebody else. These are all wants. Okay. We, that it comes from our preferences. Hmm. And because of this duality we live in, we have a free will and out of that we, we choice. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so somebody maybe uh, uh, wants to express themselves into some uh, right, uh, like a poetry, somebody wants to paint, it is a choice. Whether poetry is better than the art form, no. no. These are all different expressions. But we have some kind of preference on something that becomes our wants. Yeah. And what are the desires? Desires is driven by the something we don't have. Huh? It is not out, available out of the choice, but we want the want to go to the another level. Ki even though it doesn't exist, huh, we are looking forward to it. Hmm. We imagine about it. We like to thrive for it. Hmm. <clears throat> Presently, it is not under current op you know options. But it is not part of the ones, but it is go beyond. It is not yet available. So those availabilities not out of the choice then becomes a wants. Then what we are striving for, looking for, we imagine uh, uh, and uh, um, we feel uh, I will be very happy if I get it. Those are our desires. This currently it is not there. It is not in our options, but we look forward to it, try to find out how to get it. You know, those are the things, those we aspire, those we, we feel, this is our own, you know, feeling that we feel if I get it, I will be very happy. Yeah? So those becomes our desires. So, so if you see the materialistically, I mean, in general, what I explained so far, the needs are your survival things, but you, without that, you cannot survive, you know, in this this world or in the physical body and also not only survive you have to protect so those are the needs and then like i said roti kapra makan when you have to eat and you have to you know stay in some kind of shelter to uh, to leave and to sleep uh, there so that is makan and the, we need our clothing to maintain our dignity and things like that so those are the basic needs of any human being Wants are out of those what we prefer, you know. If we prefer the certain kind of food, if we prefer to stay certain kind of houses, if you were prefer to certain kind of uh, clothing, if you listen to certain kind of things, if you like to uh, express our certain kind of, those are all wants. Yeah. So this is what we want out of the available choices. And the desires, what we like to have, we feel that if we like to, we have it, we will be thing. So, 
maybe in the same thing but a bigger version better version you know like that we feel those are our desires <coughs> so we need so suppose this this house example okay roti ka makan makan example we need shelter that is a need so then wants are available all those things we prefer to stay in certain kind of certain kind of building certain kind of things with certain facilities those are our wants which we have we can just choose we where to do where to stay wants are maybe we need a uh, you know a big big bungalow and uh, with a you know the lavish uh, uh, like a lawn and uh, next to it say golf course and with a mountain view and with a lot of uh, what is called uh, the servants are serving us and with certain kind of so called lifestyle those with a you know huge house in a particular location or that becomes our desire because that is not available yet you are look you are you feel that if you stay that kind of house you will be very happy so those becomes your desire okay so and we try to of course we try to do certain things to may make that desire as what we get it hmm. and desire is not only roti kapra makan it can have into you know how to live our life now, like certain kind of lifestyle we want to desire even the desire comes that uh, we um, our relationships you know somebody wants to marry someone it is a desire you know so that so it is not available yet there is no such thing not met not proposal yet but it is their desire to to have to marry a certain kind of person and so these are kind of things that the all desires so uh, in relationships also the same same three categories are there we do need relationships we do do need you know get married and having you know children the procreation and thing like that wants is the what type of you know what type of life uh, we, things we choose to have out of available option and desire is we look for something but we may not have the choices are not there but we want to create and like to go for it so it's is all these aspects in our life aspect you can go into these three categories so so far so, so in this it is i hope it is clear that in the how it is plays out so if it is uh, if it is our survival or protection related it is needs and if your choice related these are wants it's something but we looking for thriving for it's in our imagination you know we um, you know it will be we are running behind it uh, into those are our desires you know so what what we like to have you know, available presently it is not available okay so now let me come to the your actual question of the spiritual terms what does that mean to start with the spiritual terms um and uh, we are all uh, human being having human experience on planet earth okay so it as a part of our <coughs> experience we are having all those things the choices whatever i am saying as a part of the creator there is a you know agreement with the creator we have a free will you know free will is given to us so that we can operate and have our own experiences of life on planet earth okay so this is free will is a part of it human body is a part of the divine gift what we like to do is have a human experience so these are all experiences yeah now <clears throat> to operate that we also need the energy the life force energy you know, it is a prana which connects us you know that becomes your experience to happen otherwise physical body is just a you know physical body means dead body uh, or difference between dead body and life body is just prana it's just connection the energy okay which connects our physical body with with the the energy that is Uh, the energetic system in our body, and we all know that is we have the chakras, seven chakras in our body. Main is the Shushumna Nadi. So, to have this kind of the energy, uh, different levels of energy to experience life. Okay, we have been clearly defined chakras, seven chakras. Suddenly, why I am talking about the chakras? I will come little later. You can correlate later on with your question. 
those are given the first chakra, the, the root chakra. And uh, this root chakra, um, it is basically meant for our survival. <clears throat> so that energies are the survival energy and protection energy that is governed by the first chakra. <laughs> Second chakra, sacral chakra, uh, in the um, first chakra is a muladhar, root chakra. Second chakra, that uh, sacral chakra is below the navel in all these things. So, this uh, second chakra is governing that uh, uh, thing of the, our, some, uh, the preferences and the choices we make. So, and uh, and this one also it is governing first is survival and second uh, you know chakra it is also governing our system like uh, uh, the creativity and the pleasure you know all those things are there and this pleasure is comes but also the choices we make including the choice of our partners so these are the things that keep, it is orange color and this is a second chakra and it is in Sanskrit it is uh, called Swarishtan and uh, it is English called sacral chakra. So below the navel. So that is that is the place, the second chakra. And uh, so if we see that your actually the uh, needs are governed by the first chakra of our body, which is, you know, root chakra. And the one I was just explaining about this, the pleasure and the creativity, we have discussed about this painting thing and expression through the poetry or having, having um, you know, we want a certain kind of partner and thing like that. So this is, this is comes under the want category. And this is actually governed by the second chakra of our body, which is orange in color. The sacral chakra or Swadishtan. Then we go to the level of the desire, what I just explained earlier. It is come our, you know, our position in the society, our, you know, self-esteem, our confidence and our ambitions. Like, we need to work to earn money that, that is, uh, you know, that is the need. And suppose we want certain kind of job, certain position, that is our wants. But we desire, we want it to be, you know, the the promoted to the top of the company or we having you know uh, in, uh, so many big achievements and going into the uh, f uh, fortune 500 companies and uh, or in the some level we want some award like a national award or in this category these are all it is not only that what kind of job we wanted to do it is also related to that which level our ambition that what we wanted to achieve, this particular aspect is governed by the third chakra, the Manipura. <clears throat> so this is the our ambitions, our personal, you know, so-called goal that we try to achieve and thing like that. So this comes into there. So energetically, they are in the different level, you know. So that the first chakra, second chakra, third chakra, and these are in the different uh, these levels. And what is this your, you know, needs, wants and desires, they are also having the basically the operation of that expression, energetic expression of those chakras, what we explained a little earlier. So in spiritual terms, it is just a different level of energy, what we experience and the related parameters and aspects that is the, so that is the definition of those activities, what is mentioned in the spiritual terms. Like now I just answer if you brief in one line. So the needs are expression of first chakra in the in the spirituality when we act chakra activation and all those things. Then wants are the expression of the second chakras and desires the expression of the third chakras. So that answers your first question. Okay. Thank you, Guruji. Um, so now we go to the second question. Yes, please. Yeah. So the second question is, uh, to what extent does our uh, domestic, cultural, social, ecological, political, mm -hmm. religious and economic structure or context influence our needs, wants and desires? Okay. 
So, <laughs> this what you explained is, um, that is our external world. Yeah, those are the different parameters of the external world, the cultural, social, and political, and religious, and things like that. So, these are these are the constitute our external world. And that external world has everything, it has a certain kind of characteristics. It's governed a certain kind of areas in our external life, you know, the life we lead. You can see the social life, cultural life, and our, you know, economic conditions and things like that. In the the religion we follow and things like that. Economic structure, of course, that defines the, in our uh, uh, society, the what level we will be in and all this. So, it was based on as we get our, you know, out input from the external world. So, they actually doing, what they're doing on us, it is called conditioning. You know, we got get conditioned by uh, all these aspects of the external world. If it has happened in that, you just mentioned about the domestic, means it, it starts with our childhood conditioning or family conditioning. We have each, each and every family has their, their own culture, their way, own way of leading the life, own way of belief system and do's and don'ts of every family. Yeah? So those are our, uh, so those constitutes because we have to operate, because we have to live in that family, we have to live in that social structure, society, or live it in that culture. So we have to be governed by the rules and regulations or preferences of that. And of course, it affects all our those three things: needs, wants, and desires. Because we are the human being, and energetically, all you know, we we have to face with all those things. So these aspects are heavily govern our choices, our needs and wants, and we have to follow the rules and regulations because you know the rules to survive. And we need to follow the rules because we know if we don't follow the rule, we will not survive there. You know, it would we may be outcasted, we may be thrown out. If we, you know, so social norm, if we break or something, or we break the law, we can be, you know, imprisoned. You know, the things like that. So we have to to operate into this world. We have to follow their rules, rightly or wrongly. We may not like it, but we have to follow as long as we want to operate there. That is, say, not to be Roman in Rome. Okay. Means you have to follow the rules of that. If you don't like the rules, change the place. Go to somewhere where that rule doesn't exist. Hmm? So then you can you can enjoy life there, but in the as long as you are there, so so in that sense, as long as you are part of that culture, as long as you are part of that family, as long as we are uh, that uh, um, you are into certain system, like I said, the political also. As long as we follow certain religion, you have to follow the norms, rules, and regulations of that particular aspects. Yeah. So all the choices, all the needs and wants uh, we make, we we go under them, and those are the conditioning we call it. Each and everything is a conditioning us, <clears throat> so that uh, it goes into that level whether it will be needs what uh, and um, needs and wants are governed by that. But the desires is little different. Uh, type because what happens is the uh, desires is coming from our mind or it is we call it is a the ego. We need the ego to operate into the external world, but what happens is because of our ego, I'm not talking anymore about the conditioning. Conditioning means we learn that do's and don'ts, what to do that. When ego comes, then another layer comes into it. Yeah. We wanted to so-called manipulate the system to get what we want or to meet our desire. In this case, what happens is, even though we, we are, we know that uh, this is the rules, regulations are not the way, but our, those ego wants to play with it. <clears throat> and sometimes we, because what whatever we desire, we want to get it by hook or crook. It means, it means somehow, and those somehow, is not necessarily they will follow all the rules of the of all this the system. So, which is beyond conditioning is the desire to break them, and that element is brought by our own ego. 
Yeah, suppose so far maybe I was giving example of the say award winning and all. Maybe so far my family nobody got that kind of award, but I want a national award or international award or something like that. So my desire to get that, I may like to manipulate it, go beyond this so that I can achieve whatever I wanted to achieve. I'm not talking good bad here. I'm saying that we are intelligent being. So we use the, our intelligence to meet our desire by breaking all those you know, things or find a loophole to get out of it. Suppose we are following the law, but I'm having, having so economic power. So I can use the economic tools to break the law. Maybe I'm politically affiliated, um, high connections. I use the political tool to, to so that I can get rid of something that is supposed to be under the law. So those comes all under the desires part of it. And those desires is pushed by or maybe fueled by our own ego. Because why in the first place we like to go into that territory which is beyond the law, beyond the norm? Because of it to satisfy our ego. Or we think that we may smart that we can outdone the system, outdone these things <coughs> and we can go beyond. So those are all governed by two. That uh, so it is heavily uh, that uh, dependent on all those things what I just explained. So what extent? Quite a lot. You know, it is in the very high percentage they affect our the, our needs, wants, and desires, and those are the conditionings we have from the beginning. As I said, from the childhood, maybe in the education system also is uh, there educational conditioning there. So whatever you mentioned about that, if I just uh, go into mentioning the related related conditioning, domestic one, we, we either it is childhood conditioning or family conditioning. Yeah, cultural there is a cultural conditioning is there, social conditioning is there, uh, <coughs> economic ecological um, okay ecology okay. So ecological it is just uh, you know what is the environmental conditioning we have means we develop certain things because of the ecology um, of the system maybe we live in a hot country so we, we develop certain kind of lifestyle if you are all the time it is maybe snow ice and all we develop a different kind of lifestyle so it it the ecology of that that, that that depends affects our life and the choices uh, of course with that that do political conditioning okay so when we start aware of that we develop the political affiliation political uh, out of our choices, we got that religious. There are many things are religious condition we are. Um, so we have the, some view are based on our religious conditioning. Well, we said this is, um, uh, it is sin to do it and all. These are coming from our religious conditioning. Our certain things is not to be taken as a food and all this. This is coming from the religious conditioning. And they, I'm not saying good and bad here because only I'm telling the origin of those kind of things that religious condition. Economic structure, yes, we have a, some economic levels and we know very well certain things are uh, allowed the certain level of economic thing and certain are beyond that. And uh, when somebody having a higher economic strata in the society, they can enjoy much more freedom than the lower ones. So in, in other words, this is the economic caste system. Okay, that is, uh, it is not written anywhere, but it is there. You know, we don't want, uh, like, <coughs> yeah, um, some, some, something like, say, enjoying a holiday. Yeah, so we don't feel that the laborers have a right to enjoy holidays. Yeah, so go to see beach and lie down and there. Because we don't think that they, you know, they are entitled for it. And uh, whether the higher economic strata, maybe a uh, full day, they are not doing their job. They are just go and uh, playing golf full day, making few phone calls here and there. So they are entitled to it because they are in the higher economic strata. So this is a culture. But if we see some, uh, you know, somebody who is a clerk in the office playing, uh, you know, anything, forget about golf maybe playing cards whole day so that is we think that has gone this this fellow is doomed <coughs> so but we don't feel so where somebody is economic higher in the economic strata so from where this is coming because we don't apply same rule for all these type of people right 
coming from the economic background, how they operate and how you think they, they come from. Anyway, so I think, uh, so that is clear. So those the conditionings, all these levels of conditioning, they affect heavily of our needs, wants and desires. Because desire come to break off them. So somebody, maybe is a, working as a clerk, wanted to be you know, president of a bank. It is, that is a desire. So they wanted to break and go to whatever it takes, go to that level and extra education effort and things like that. Why not? You know, those, those are the kind of things that is there. So this is the part of the things and coming from all these conditionings that you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Okay. Uh, so the third question is, how does the interplay of all three, which is needs, wants and desires, in the physical world lead to exponential growth or severe damage first at the macro level second at the micro level okay <clears throat> see to some extent i touch upon this in the second answering the second question so yeah, let us give your you know macro level and micro level uh, let us consider for understanding purposes, the my, uh, macro level is what is outside me, like world and the society and the country or things, the culture and everything. And micro level, which is inside me. So the interplay is that our external world is that uh, we create our reality. I'm just a little... Uh, let me giving the spiritual uh, touch on it and for understanding purposes, our external reality based on is our an internal creation because we experience life based on what we uh, feel inside. You know, that is that is what the life is. Yeah? So the connection between the, the macro and micro is that how we feel about the external thing inside us that becomes the micro and that is inside. And those experiences then define our the future choices and the things like that. And that's how the life runs. <clears throat> Suppose in the, you know, you're talking about the growth and uh, this or damage, but whatever it is. So in the physical world, the growth comes because if, if you meet something, suppose we want something, we get it, then, then find our say, like ambition to do something. And even if we manage to achieve it, Definitely will not stop there, no? We'll go further. And that's how the growth path takes place. So it can happen that uh, we can, we, we meet our target and so we may, maybe whatever we thought in the childhood, uh, my desire, I achieved it in the, my 25 years of age. Then by that time I develop further desire, I achieve it by 30, 35 years of age. And then further, by middle age, I achieved whatever, you know, least, you know, all my bucket list are met and then naturally my desire go higher and higher to meet them and I am then capable and then with all these experiences and use it for the better. Yeah. So definitely those becomes the about the, the ingredients of your exponential growth. Same thing. Yeah. But if my desires or goals are negative. Yeah. So that creates the damage like you know suppose keep that up to 25 years keep it same like i achieved whatever i wanted to achieve yeah then i by the time i realize that i can manipulate people i can manipulate system because that comes as a part of the achievement yeah and by the time i realize that this system that is the loophole that is the thing and the interplay between say interplay between uh, the law and the government and the, you know, the system and the uh, structure uh, in the business structures versus the economic uh, world and things like that. We got many loopholes also into it. <laughs> instead of growing, suppose instead I started that I will expand my uh, business or promotion in the job, it said that I choose to, as I was saying, hook or crook. So first one is the hook path. Somehow I wanted to get there. Yeah. Then I uh, try to manipulate the system. By crook means I am now creating the, some kind of criminal conspiracies to get what I want. 
Hmm. If that follows, then I maybe I will develop. I become a quite a successful crook. <laughs> maybe I become a criminal. I am able to manipulate certain kind of. I even manipulate the government, manipulate the economy, and all those things. I am amassing the wealth. Yeah. In the criminal way, so if if we choose that path, it's all around the free will. So it is also driven by the ambition, driven by the goal, driven to be be on the top. You know. So if it happens in this way, then it damages our uh, so-called character. Character means <coughs> in traditional way, character means something. You know. Um, uh, that I am not talking about that character. I am not talking about the morality here. Okay. So, in spiritual terms, the um, character means you have a congruence of thoughts, words, and action. But you think that that is what you say, and that is what you actually do. If you have this congruence, you are in the high level of character in spiritual terms. Then do the nothing to do with the morality and uh, you know um, uh, morality and uh, womanizing and that kind of stuff. It's nothing to do with that. It is about uh, or cheating and thing. It is all about this is the one it is. Hmm. So it, what happens is if we go into that level when you are manipulating system, manipulating uh, the things, then at one stage everything is I call it a Everything is private, limited into the world. One time will come when we touch the ceiling, but your desire to go higher and higher will not stop, even though the it can. Suppose I, I am able to manipulate the system some place, hmm. so manipulate the system of the government. Still, I am able to reach to a certain level. Beyond that, it is not possible hmm. because my ambition didn't stop, huh, which is. Driven by inside, in your in your question, in the micro level, my macro level life would get affected, but it didn't stop there. Hmm. And maybe I will venture with something and trying to develop something between conflict between two governments and go them to war and things like like that. And I felt trapped, and that becomes my disaster and fall down, and I become. Causing the damage of my life. Forget about enjoying life. Maybe rest of my life I'll be imprisoned and may, you know maybe assassinated, but not you know. But from where that thing came, where the life changes, the turning point happened when I didn't know where to stop. <clears throat> Started manipulating, going to the bigger and bigger because the lower manipulation, you know, they don't give me that kick anymore. So I go higher and higher. So in this case, going into the like a positive direction, like I become more ambitious and become bigger into business, more into earning, you know, bigger house and all this. I didn't go to that part. I choose the manipulating system and by by doing illegal things and try to get that in a that way. Then it, that will be cause of my damage or the, you know severe damage. I may be punished for that if I get caught. Will be punished for that. And things like that, so that will impact in that way. So all those things. Uh, so needs definitely nobody get punished for their needs, uh, even though some people try to manipulate somebody else's need, like need for shelter or play with that. I'm not going to that. So needs and wants also it can in the level more like a power will decide the what time you will you need will be satisfied. Means if you are in a low into the this power, then it will take longer time to meet your needs. I mean, once, hmm? but the desires you can take your constructive way or destructive way. You know, so far that I just explained. Hmm? Your ambition can take you. It becomes a, a you know the biggest criminal in the world. You know, it, that is also another ambition driven hmm? because your value system is altered. So this is not about. Um, like morality, but it is it has got because it is harming others, harming people, <coughs> harming society. It is choice made, hmm. and it, the harm will settle itself because that is that is the way also the karma works. So it is not that you meeting your ambition. Question is how hmm. we call it a intention. Your intention matters. 
in the process of getting what you desire, what method you opted, what choices you make, yeah, that is important. That that develops either karma or it becomes a reward for you. You know, you maybe whatever you are following, now I'm taking giving a spiritual thing. What difference is next? One I told about the character. Okay. If character means if you convince our thoughts, words, and actions, then you are in tune with the divinity. Hmm. So that means that you don't need to pretend, you know, the more you go to the negative territory, you have to pretend something. You think something, say something, do something else. Okay. Then all the time you have to be careful what you said earlier or not. But if you are in a congruence, you don't have to bother. You live in the present moment. Whatever you may, may, may said five years earlier or ten years earlier doesn't matter. Because you are all the time you are in congruence. So you know that there is no such thing you have to manipulate things or make up things. So you tell the truth all the time and by the process you are in the part of the divinity. You become a representative of the divine. And so far as these things are concerned, about um, uh, whether uh, uh, this choices you make, if your choices aligned with the divine principles, okay, then your you can go to a level of unimaginable growth of the territory. You know what is not possible to get it otherwise on the planet Earth. Because as I said, it, you are private limited. The key to go to the unlimited territory is the spiritual path, which is unlimited. Okay, but in that, if you follow that, you only want to go to that kind of amount of joy. You can experience yourself. The sense of achievement, sense of thing, will be much, much beyond all these norms and breaking rules can give you. So, so called kick can give you. All the time you will be high. All the time you will be connected to the infinite, without harming your body, without contaminating your mind. It's a wonderful thing because it's all purity, all powerful. So <clears throat> that is your this micro level business what it comes. So the path to go to the macro is through micro and not only micro, that element which is there, which is energetic, which is invisible, you know. So not even micro, that is a subtle level. So the way to go into that level is subtle, then micro, then macro. Hmm. So it is it is actually the other way around. So, <clears throat> some people, I'm just, uh, that remind me one of the explanation, uh, one thing, but it's a good, there's a giving example of a, how these three things play, the subtle and the, the micro and macro, how they play. <clears throat> yeah. See, um, you want, uh, suppose you wanted to be happy. Yeah. He wanted to be happy so that you plan for a holiday. He wanted to go for a holiday to say Mauritius. Uh, and uh, you think if I go there and stay one night, uh, well, not one night, seven days, maybe I'll be very happy. Yeah? To plan for the holiday, it needs money. Hmm. So you have to save money and earn money to save it for the holiday. Yeah. <coughs> so you have to do some work to earn that much amount of money. And then that is your desire. You have to you know go there. So... Then you plan that, execute them, like you have to actually buy the ticket and holiday package, go there, book hotel, have a good food and thing like that. And then out product is happiness. You have become very happy. Your desires are met. Okay. So in the normal way, so it happens there. Like first we have to actually uh, like to earn money, save money, plan for it then you actually execute them, which is you're going to the, actually going to the holiday, buying tickets and things like that. And then you will be happy. When we go to the, in the spiritual direction, your life will just reverse. You will be happy without any reason. <laughs> You'll be connected and that brings happiness. Okay, not happiness, the joy. But anyway, for the sake of not to mention the word, let us say it's an ultimate happiness. So you are at ultimate happiness. That came first without anything, doing anything. Okay. 
So you connected yourself. Just by connection, you come ultimate joy. And then what you what's happening is then your mind changes, everything changes. So you need to your whatever your the you, whatever you do, that is you do out of your compassion and love. Okay, then here and that affects uh, when this execution part is there. Uh, then final outcome, your life changes. All external thing you try attracting the you know better things in your life and your work. Whatever you work is governed by this the compassion and things. So and that changes, and when you work changes, that changes. Then automatically brings you those all those kinds of promotions, all those kinds of aspirations. What you are looking for in your work. Hmm. So it is just the reverse, right? So when you say first you working for it, then you save the money, then you go for a holiday hmm. to enjoy. Here enjoyment came first and then automatically whatever you do, that becomes your experience of a holiday. And that changes your life, your work and the work style and things like that. It is just a reverse thing. Yeah. So when you get connected, everything will change like this. And those are fully aligned with the divine principles so that you need not to manipulate. There is no chance of you to, earlier we discussed about uh, that uh, creating damage. No one will create damage because you are already governed under that. Your the degree, the level will go much, much higher because you are operating, you are not actually doing anything. In fact, the other way around, you stop you know, your mind activity. Through meditation, we stop our mind, right? We don't allow our ego to operate. And that's how we come to a territory which is infinitely powerful. Uh, and it is 100 times more joyful than any happiness anything in the world could have got by meeting some desires and all. By surrendering your desires to the divine, you become, you are going to a territory which is just the infinite. In the life also, that is the part we call it that, uh, you know, being dead, you become immortal. Like you, you have to lower self as to die so that you can experience the test of the immortality. Because at soul level, it is not, mortality is not there. No harm is there. You know, so there is no such thing called negative. Everything are experiences. So you will outgo all these kind of limitations and negativity and, uh, you know, getting trapped and uh, sorrows and things and everything will, will go away automatically. Yeah? So you will, that way you will, then the, all the change will happen. The effect you will see in the macro level, but the change happen in the micro level and the cause of the change is the subtle level. Origin at, is at the subtle level. Okay, so that completes the third question. So I think we don't have uh, much time now for the fourth one. So let me save all the attendees. Just give me a minute. Okay. All right. I think we have completed our the first part. So from, I think, uh, three questions you asked, right, Ranita, so far? Yeah, three questions. Yeah. Three questions. Fourth question. We'll see you all in the second half. I'll post another link. Then we'll, we'll start discussing about the fourth question. Onwards. All right. See you in the other side. Home Mangala.
I think almost all we have joined. Let us start our second part of our today's session. So this is uh, session number 214. We are discussing about the topic needs, wants and desires versus spirituality. And this question posted by uh, Ronita earlier in the group. So we already explained about three questions. Now, Ranita, go ahead with your fourth question. Uh, okay. So the fourth question is, how can detachment as a tool help us to navigate among all the three, which is needs, wants, and desires? Okay, good. <clears throat> See, in the... Uh, so now I'm just discussing about the spiritual tool you know, what we get it. I'm not giving, going into the normal practical tool and your positive reinforcement and the life and things like that. So to understand spirituality, we start with explaining all these things are governed by the lower three chakras in our body. Yeah? Yeah, all our experiences governed by the lower three chakras of body. Two, so, in that case, the we are talking about the detachment here. So, um, how to use the detachment to go with this? Because to go into um, for that, to improve upon this, we need to go into the experience of the higher chakras in our body. If we don't experience, so higher level of experience, 
we can think, we can go, like how to navigate it means going to the higher level of chakras, experience, of, we already have a seven chakras in the body. So if we go, not only limited to the lower three chakras, if we go in the four and above, then it will give us the higher experience of the human existence. So that means to go to the higher level of the experience, we need to find out the way to go into the higher level of experience by activating our higher chakras. Okay. This kind of progression, uh, detachment is needed because we need to release the clutch of the old one. It will not disappear. I'm not saying, you know, delete your lower three chakras. What I'm saying is to move to the top needs you to detach from the lower level so that you are exposed to the higher level, the opportunities or your potential to the higher thing in your life can, can, uh, can open up for you. So going to the higher level, I just normally give an example like a, you know, walking up in a staircase, like any stairs. So suppose you are going through the first floor, the ground floor to first floor. <clears throat> So you have to walk on the stairs to reach up to the first floor, right? Just if you see so-called your uh, micro level observation, and uh, yeah, earlier I used to study something called micro motion study. To, that is uh, came originally, I think, from the management of manufacturing industry. You know, they have done my. Uh, Micro motion study. I mean, each and every movement you make that is studied, and that gives you clue how you can just improve the whole system. And so, anyway, at the the, the issue micro motion study, the issue came, and uh, let me just just take it as a story. It, as a, I don't know why it is just clicking to me right now, but. Uh, just I am giving one example. How your this uh, it changes in the micro motion level it changes. Then I am coming. I will come back to that uh, the this question of detachment yeah. <clears throat> and then staircase. Yeah. So just remind me about the staircase because that is important to understand this. Um, okay. All right. Let me explain the staircase. Then I come to the story. But the if you observe the micro motion of climbing up stairs, then what you do? You put say one in the one uh, maybe your left foot is a third step, right foot is a fourth step. Now you wanted to climb up higher. You wanted to put your foot on the fifth step. One is at fourth. So keep your body balance in the fourth step. Then you shift your left leg from the third. Remove it from the third and place them under the fifth. Right? That's what we climb. Now we put the body balance on the fifth step, move out our right foot from the fourth, place it onto the sixth. So like that we'll climb, right? Stairs. Isn't it? I'm just going to the very basic level, how we climb up a, a staircase. Yeah? So all keep we keep on changing our foot and body balance, you know, putting one leg up, you know, leave the third, go to the fifth, and leave fourth, go to sixth, then we balance on the sixth, leave fifth, go to seventh, like that we climb up, you know, stairs. So, in other words, every time you want to move up, you, you have to release the lower step and shift it to the higher step. <coughs> The process of releasing the lower and shifting you to the higher is a normal process of climbing up. So the, in the growth sense, that thing is called the detachment. Why do you need to detach from the lower one and place it to the higher one? Just now I give an example of climbing upstairs. It happens everywhere, every part of our life. This principle applies. So unless until, suppose, I'm just giving a theoretical scenario. It may sound funny. Somebody place left foot on the third and fourth foot on the uh, fourth step, the next right foot on the fourth. <clears throat> then they are saying, I am uh, I, I love that third step. I, I don't want to release it. Then your progress will be stopped. There's nothing wrong with the third step. 
He said, no, no, what's wrong the third step has done and it helped me to you know, climb up and I don't want to give it. Hmm. In that case, because of you are emotionally attached to the third step, you are stuck. You cannot move up. <clears throat> you have to release to the third so that you can place it on fifth. And that's how the any progress goes. This mistake, you know, that we we are got so attached to the lower step, they helped us too. We come to the, up to this level because of that. And one point of time, it supported us fully. That is also correct. Now that full support job is transferred to the fourth. You have to release third and go to fifth leg, you know, step. Then that is how the progress happened. That is how climbing up happens. Because of emotional attachment with the third, we, we got stuck in all our lives. If you see, we are get stuck in the various areas of our life because of this. We got emotional, what's wrong they have done. And they have done nothing wrong. It is that time is up. This time has to go. Okay, so now you have to move on, go to the next one so that you progress in your life in the forward direction. <clears throat> anyway, so I, I hope it is clear. Yeah. So this is a detachment means it is a part of the progress. It is a process that is required for you to go up one point of time. The fifth step, whatever stepping right now will also, you know, it will be over. The purpose will be over. Then you go to the seventh from there in the left foot. Okay. So you have to keep on moving on and detaching from the lower ones to go to the higher ones. Okay. So in that case, the detachment, uh, the rule to navigate all the three means you have to go to the higher chakras so that you have to leave the lower chakras. Dependence on the lower chakra, you have to leave so that your progress can go. Okay. Now, I hope I explained that, you know, where the detachment comes in the lower level to higher level and what is the purpose. Now, let me go back to the story I was telling about the, what I remembered about the micro motion study. It was interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> See, all the manufacturing industry, even though it is all the different industry like hospitality, like hotel and all the airlines and many other industries, they have followed it. Hmm. Micro motion study means each and every activity, you know, they recorded the video and then the experts, they analyzed the, what different people do, different way of doing the jobs, which, which a better way to do the job. And if somebody is efficient, how they become efficient? You know, suppose there are two workers, you know, one worker is very productive, you know, she produces maybe 50 items in a day. Another worker produces only 22 items in a day. Why that, that other worker is more efficient than this one? So they studied, they filmed them and they studied different things and come to very, very minor things that uh, minor means brief things, what uh, practice, what the efficient one follows, the other one, they didn't follow that. And that makes the ultimate difference of their productivity. <coughs> Suppose I'm just giving one example. Suppose um, electronics industry, so TV manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. What they do, there is a, suppose there is something called the motherboard, some PCB is to call and the microchips and electronic elements are placed into that. So if you go to any electronic manufacturing company, you will see there is a, you know, like a bay, you know, bay with a tray. So each and every one that motherboard or the circuit board put on a tray, each and every one has a have to place few things, few items onto the board, you know, four or five items. Mm -hmm. And they pass on to the board to the next one. The next the person, next worker put other things, other four or five things, then shift it to the uh, next person so that at the end of the row, all things what is needed on the board are placed. And then it go to the shouldering and other things, you know, that uh, other manufacturing processes. Now think of the scenario, This it can be happen anywhere, it can be the luggage handling in a flight or many other places this happens, different people do different jobs into the into the row of activities. Yeah? Suppose here, one person, he can do it very fast and other person is not that fast, little slow. So what will happen? This, this is the guy who can do the very quick 
way of doing things. Yeah, he will have nothing to do. He's waiting. And then the another guy, he has a piled up of the work and he's doing it his own pace, no, one by one. <clears throat> so there is a mismatch, you know, disparity. And because of that, we, the strength of the chain is the weakest point of the chain. Mm. So suppose the 10 workers are sitting on the same bench, the, the speed of the bench will be the speed of the lowest one. <laughs> you know, who is the slowest? Because he gets piled up. <coughs> and then he releases the next one, but guy who cannot get it. Yeah? So that defines the, the efficiency of the whole, the manufacturing unit. That becomes their efficiency. I just give an example of the electronics industry. But this happens everywhere. So the micro motion study, what I was talking earlier, what happens is they recorded and filmed all of them. And they were studying, you know, screen by screen, they are studying what actually these guys are doing. <clears throat> what they find out was the guy who can who is slow, he is missing something. Like he take one thing, then look at here, then time, or maybe some talking, and when his attention is diverted, number one, <clears throat> and and that fellow is not in a very good sequence. Like sometimes he put this first, that second, and the next time this first, that second, and so on. No, there is no such similarity. When he is doing his job. But other guy, <clears throat> what has happened is he bring it to the as a habit pattern, hmm. like uh, playing the drum of the music. No, what job he need to do? He put one by one, one by one, one by one, finish. One by one, one by one, one by one, finish. Yeah. So he bring it to a rhythm. <clears throat> Whatever job he wants to do, he is bring it to the rhythm, and that's <clears throat> that's why it is done so fast. And the other guy is does not in the rhythm does at his whims and fancy, which changes every time, and that slows down. So end of the study, you know what they found out? If you bring everybody in the same rhythm, overall efficiency increases. So what they did, that is the, this, uh, the solution was fantastic. What they did, they put some kind of music into this size, this manufacturing unit. <clears throat> They put some music, tick 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 dum, tick 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 dum, and everybody doing the same rhythm. Eh? And they actually manufacturing the grow because they change the what is called the speed and the tune. They select that. They can compose any kind of music based on the rhythm you want. Yeah. They created certain music which increase their efficiency like a double because everybody is working in the same way. You have seen that in the Olympic, the synchronized swimming they do. Yeah. They, they just make them internalized that music in them. <clears throat> That's why without listening, they can perform. And exactly the same microsecond, they can perform the same thing. S similar one, they have done it in the manufacturing level. You know, they put that music and that some music is such, they have done that research, find out, and whatever the five elements, they have to put it into the board. So everybody is doing the same thing. So that, that board never stops. You know, it goes into the sequence and the productivity increases. Yeah. <clears throat> so basically, what I'm saying is that uh, your question about the detachment of it, actual reason, you know, for detachment is go and get into that rhythm. <clears throat> then you will be able to detach. Your mind works like in the in this example of. That the, the worker who has to use the mind and sometimes the mind distracts. It's quite happened, no? Sometimes talking and you know going, and that slows down your efficiency. If you can go beyond this, yeah, detachment through the rhythm of through this in spiritual level, that is a connection, you are in tune with the divine. So the lower level things automatically sorts out. Without, it will automatically happen and you need not to do specific concentration to each and everything. It is like driving a car or something like that. You need not to consciously put your leg to the brake when somebody appears in front of your car. That happens automatically. Only thing you have to come into that level, that kind of skill set, you know, when you internalize it. 
then your subconscious will take care of it and it will run automatically. Hmm. If you can do that, every areas of your life, you you know, you are connected to something, rest of the things happens by its own intelligence, that is called detachment. It's not stopping. It is not stopping the work. It is getting into the rhythm so that lower ones already been taken care of. All right. Okay. Next question. So uh, the fifth question is, how do we ensure that unconsciously we are not manipulating or are being manipulated by the three factors mentioned above? The three factors being needs, wants and desires. Yeah, I think by the time you already uh, know the answer, but I'm just repeating, depending on the higher chakras, allowing lower chakras to function automatically. So in this case, I will say to get liberated from the governing the lower three chakras, you have to give it to the fourth chakra and above. What is fourth chakra? Heart it chakra. is pure love, heart chakra. It's a pure love, right? It, it, from where the spirituality starts. <clears throat> spirituality is called love and above, means fourth chakra and above. And almost the 90%, if not more, percentage of the people on the planet Earth right now, they never experience anything spiritual into their life because they have not opened up the fourth chakra at all. All their life they spend with lower three chakras only. Hmm. Okay, survival, pleasure, and the desire or ambition. That's it. That ambition also intelligence and things like that. So move maximum up to that level. So and then that their life ends. So they never open up that one. And this open up to <clears throat> so whatever you so-called unconsciously controlling. You go to the unconscious level of open I mean, level where higher chakras open up, they take in, in charge of the lower ones. In the chakra system, also, it is a, any higher one you open that determines your governing principle of your body. If you open up to fourth level, then the, the pure love or unconditional love, or the, that is the spirituality, that governs the lower three. If you open further, <coughs> like your throat chakra, you get communication with the divine. Opens up. Not divine. Initially, it is your, your own higher self. Communication with the soul. If you come up to the fifth level, your soul takes over. <coughs> your soul takes over and the soul governs your life soul principle. But you have to, as I mentioned, <coughs> you have to willingly let go. Detach the lower ones. Like a stepping, yeah? Third step, fourth step. You have to let go the third. Otherwise, it will, all the time it will drag you down. So that is the fifth. And then sixth one is the wisdom. Okay. If you come to that wisdom level that governs your the, everything in your life, then you have to let go all the lower ones. Is There is no need. You, you, you intuitively know what you are supposed to do. <coughs> Knowingness, it comes. And when the seventh opens up, then the whole broadband with the divinity opens up. You know, you are governed by the universal principles, universal laws. <coughs> you are, you become a divine channel. So whatever available in the divinity, in the universe, you your universe takes care of your small, small petty things in your personal life. Okay. Even personal, collective and all those lives, it will take care of everything. Who created the whole universe, it cannot run a small tiny fraction of the universe it is foolish if we think it is otherwise the connection solves everything okay anyway that's the highest level that or you say that's the enlightened living okay where you are governed each and every moment you need not even bother for the next moment okay what is going to happen after one hour no no need <clears throat> anyway so that is the thing so so do when you lower one, if you unconsciously doing that, you are not uh, uh, like following the, the, the clue or whatever given, but in the higher level, just dropping them. You are not unconscious, you become super conscious, like fully aware. Okay, you are not sleeping, you are meditating, you are fully aware. 
Hmm. So, in that case, the way to get rid of unconscious thing is to become super conscious. Okay, unconscious, conscious, then there is subconscious, then super conscious. Yeah. Subconscious already I told you over the rhythm thing. Yeah. That unconsciously everything has been played out. You are not consciously putting the things job you are supposed to do. You are not consciously driving. Hmm. You are unconscious, not subconscious, not unconscious. Subconscious taken care of those things. They are much, much more powerful than that. And your super conscious is the whole universe is there. It is the whole background of the thing. So when super conscious runs a life, that becomes the holistic living. Hmm. Anyway, so that is that is the answer to your this uh, the fifth question. So that is how we do. We elevate you know, in the higher chakras. Okay. Okay. So um, now we go to the sixth question, yes. which is uh, being a woman. Does finding self-expression in the form of masculine energy more often than not block my receiving channel? Mm, okay, absolutely not. Okay, that is. See, um, this about we are, all of us, yeah. we are the combination of divine masculine and divine feminine. Both are there. Love and light. That is original, original energy, most where the universe was formed with a love and light. The love manifested as the feminine part of it. And the light has manifested masculine part of it. Okay. All of us, we have it. Yeah? So the question is that uh, it is not, uh, unless uh, like a, uh, talking about energy more often and all, means one is more, one is less, means you are just, I'm assuming you are taking that as a competitive force. Like one is powerful, one other is low. Uh -huh. Like that's why we use this kind of, you know, words are more powerful, more energetic and things like that. It is not that. Okay. Understanding is they're compatible to each other. Okay. It is, it is a, the overall synergic effects are more than individuals. <clears throat> so divine masculine, divine feminine, it is not a competition. It is, it is the same part of the same coin. It is not about Tailor is, tail is stronger or head is stronger. It not, these are not the question. Understand that both of them are there. Coin is not complete. Nobody will use that coin. Valueless. So, to have the coin and its value, both head and tail are needed. Okay. So, same here. The existence to be, to be, both Love and light are needed. That is a fundamental energy. So whatever the other energy form we learn in the physics, like electricity energy, mechanical energy, and uh, you know, uh, heat energy, those are all manifested energy, like physical dimension. The higher dimension, only two energy, love and light. Okay, that is most fundamental energy. But how they manifest in the uh, <clears throat> love is the uh, energy form of the creative energy, the creative part. And the light is the manifesting energy, which actually form the creation into that, um, in the effect. Mm. <laughs> so one is the creative energy, another is a manifesting energy. That is why the creative part has got to the feminine part of it. And the manifesting, like execution part of it, it came into the masculine part of it because you need the physical energy to for the manifestation. I need feminine energy for the creation. And that original thing has been manifested into that, even into if you come to the level of our society, yeah, the female role are more of the creative in nature. Female creates human being, you know, <clears throat> and that's how the whole generation runs. And then the masculine is just a provider in the society I'm talking, yeah? provider. So one is the creator and one is the provider. Yeah? 
So that becomes like a, this role has been manifested that way. But <coughs> anyway, so uh, being a woman, finding self-expression in the world. So no, self-expression, but now I'm talking self-expression part of it. Being an woman, you are expressing the divine feminine. You are attracting more into divine feminine and expressing yourself through it. And <coughs> divine feminine is the part of the creator, creative energy that just I, I just ex example I have given. It created the universe and nourishing them, maintaining them. Hmm. So, uh, like bringing them up a thing like that, that is equal, you know, social roles are also equally similar to one is, is there. That is why in the some of the thing in uh, like a Vedic uh, system or, you know, that time Vedic era, there is a most powerful thing has been given to Shakti, you know, all female form. Any kind of Shakti anyone wants, doesn't matter the man or woman <coughs> in the body wise, they have to worship to the Shakti to get the energy, get the power. <clears throat> so, what is the spiritual connotation of that? Because they are basically through that Devi Shakti, they are connecting to the divine feminine, which is the creative source of the whole universe. And the light is that is the, the, the divine masculine energy. This is the light and the spiritual level. It is called light of awareness. You cannot use the energy unless until you are aware. You landed up creating bombs rather than creating the next generation. Okay. So, this is the kind of thing in the destruction to Muslims. So, there's a Shakti and how to use it. Then, this is how it is manifest that governs by the awareness. <coughs> so, that's why this is the true primordial, uh, you know, the energies uh, that forms that our whole thing, everything in the universe is just this two. Okay. So, this is one is the creative energy and this is creative energy most powerful. Yeah. Because it's power, it's Shakti. Okay. And that the awareness is a divine masculine who, you know, manifest it and uh, things like that, protect it. And that is the role of a protector and thing like that, provider. And those are the roles that uh, the, the masculine thing has brought into this so that both are work and young, you know, they're compatible they were, uh, we, with each other and that's how the whole universe that is being run and that is how it is created to start with. Okay. <clears throat> so that is about uh, the, uh, the expression in the form of masculine. So you have to, both you need to bring it. Okay. So everybody. Uh, just for understanding, but everybody has a masculine and feminine, everyone. Doesn't matter by gender, they are in the man or woman. Hmm? These are the energies, different energy from all of us we have and the different part of things we use one or another. Hmm? But ultimately both are needed and both are compatible to each other. There is no competition. Okay. <clears throat> it is all about the combination that makes it work. And as I said in the beginning, it is a synergic effect. The, the one plus one is not two. It is much more than that because that is a synergic effect. That's the energy effect. Okay. That is, that is how the universe runs. And if we allow that to run in our lives, then we can, we can progress to maximum. Okay. All right. Okay. Next. Okay. So um, the seventh question is, how do I identify my receiving channel being a mere mortal? I know a receiving channel. Okay. Um, to answer directly your question is removing all the clutter you have. Your channel is already there. Okay. You need not to uh, receive the channel. Channel is already there. You have to remove the clutter. Uh, you have to remove the blocks so that the flow can happen through the channel. So that's what we want to work upon our lower self so that we remove the clutter hmm. on the physical level, mental level, emotional level, and then higher. Yeah. The process of cleansing all levels, it is called Antakkaran Suddhi. Okay. The spiritual masters, they clean their 
different selves, different layers. That's why they become a channel. It automatically happens. Like in the mountain where the rain happens, most easiest path into that mountain, the water comes down from the mountain from the easiest path, that becomes a river. So only thing you have to remove the blocks, you remove the stones and make the you know, proper slope and thing like that. And then water automatically flows. So you need not to bother about the water and uh, how I can, uh, means how I can get more water when you know, uh, some part of the mountain is asking. Be the gorge, be the place where maximum water can flow. So you have to work on the uncluttering. That's what I meant by uncluttering. You have to remove all the block stones and if there is anything stopping, you know, the slopes are not proper, make them proper gradient and things, water will automatically come. So that is that is a right understanding of that. Even mere mortal doesn't matter. Uh, mortal is by choice at the soul level. Why we are mortal? Because our soul wants to experience itself almost in finite ways. That almost in why is it all, almost infinite? Because uh, uh, at one stage, uh, the soul also will disappear. Mm. It will merge. Mm. So that is almost infinite. But if you forget about only that, mm, it's also path is almost infinite, right? It wants to have as many as inform as many as experiences possible. That's why it takes different lifetimes, different places, different combination, different societies, different economic condition, different <laughs> linguistic things, different cultures, and all those different, different, different things. If you club it up together, the combination becomes almost infinite. It wants to experience itself. Even if you take a birth in one body. It is also, you have many years. It can have a, you know, 80, 90, 100 years to live. Each year will have the months, 12 months, and then each one will have four weeks and seven days, and then 24 hours, and then, you know, 60 minutes in each. So each and every minute, if not second, will give you different, different experiences. So in one lifetime, you have so many experiences, and that many lifetime. In the, as I said, that uh, it is uh, some uh, scriptures, it is says uh, 84 lakhs of births you have to take in the different day. But anyway, but the human body minimum 700, hmm? all of us we have in the human body before that animal, plant and all those 84 lakhs belong to those things. Anyway, so forget about the numbers. It, numbers is just uh, nothing. Just understand the, uh, the composition of that. So each and every life wanted to experience as many ways as possible. So every minute is an experience. Hmm. One soul wants to experience in the different, different ways. And as many different ways as possible. And as many different ways is not possible in the single body. <coughs> That's why man is mortal. Man means gender neutral. Hmm. Human being is mortal because it has to experience itself in the multiple ways. Multiple type of birth, multiple type of death. And all these are part of the experience. That's why it is mortal. Okay. So receiving the channel, just get the connection. To get the connection, what to do? Remove the clutter. How I can do it? When you are ready, then divine will send you someone, will teach you. And that person will be called your guru. Okay, that's it. Follow the guidance, you get it. More you come to the level of you, your own understanding, mind things, you will creating more clutter than it getting cleared. If you follow the path, it will take you there, wherever it, you need to go or supposed to go. Otherwise, something wrong will happen. No, it will only delay. Delay maybe for a few years or maybe a few decades. Otherwise, maybe one life or maybe multiple lives. You will come back to the same thing after maybe 5, 10, 20, 50 lifetimes. Who knows? It's your choice, your free will. Okay. But if you are anyway, you have to walk that path, why to delay? If the opportunity comes, grab it. There comes, the, there, there lies the smartness. Okay. All right. Okay. What is the next question? So the eighth question and the last question uh, of this session is, 
is the purpose of my life and the receiving channel linked to each other? Oh, yes. <clears throat> the whole purpose of the life is from being human to human being. Means, whatever life you had earlier is human doing to do something. So, only, only thing you have to learn from <clears throat> getting uh, from the doing part to being part. So, that is called the spiritual journey. <clears throat> so, all the channel, what you will do, it will connect you to the universal consciousness. The whole purpose of spirituality is, how, in fact, to how to, three things. First is how to connect with your own soul consciousness, your own soul. The second is get a communication with your soul. And third is then surrender yourself to your higher self and run your life accordingly. That is enlightened living. So, the receiving channel is when that channel opens up, the lower parts are over. It is called no further life and death. You know, you don't need anymore. You get that connection. That is a part. That's why all the lives are leading towards that. <clears throat> how to get connected? How to get become the channel which is the divinely guided life? So that is what uh, is meant by that. Once you the connection is established, the purpose of life is over, and you need not to come back here. You know. That uh, uh, it's called punarapi jananam punarapi maranam. There is no need further. The purpose of life is served. You have the experiences and march back to the universal consciousness. By the way, interestingly, I, I was talking about to come back again and again. You know, the main reason we come back here on the planet Earth again and again, interestingly, as per today's topic, is desire. We have too many desires left. That's why you have to take birth again. You know, unsatisfied desires, that is the main cause of rebirth. Some we, uh, you know, like to have certain, certain lifestyle, our desire didn't meet, so we have to come to that level again to go get into that. We want a certain, you know, the properties and all in this lifetime not happen because the desire is there, you have to come again to enjoy that kind of lifestyle. <coughs> it comes with a different set of problems, but earlier we didn't know that. Then we realize oh, there is nothing called free lunch. Yeah, they come with the, their own baggages. We wanted to you know, get married with somebody that didn't happen in this lifetime. Again, we have to, another lifetime has to happen when the, that marriage will actually take place. So these are the kind of things. Suppose we do get married, but we didn't follow our own duties and all those things. Yeah? That becomes cause for another lifetime so that we can do execute our duties properly, learn the things thing properly. All this, there's the reason of the so fundamentally the reason for rebirth is a desire. Yeah. So then how you get uh, you know um, the earlier is uh, identify and go uh, mayor model. Okay, the last question with uh, this question you are saying so how to get over these desires that is just connect with something which is infinitely more powerful than the desire. When you are the spiritually connected, you get all the joy, means 100% joyful, infinite joy. It, it, uh, you cannot imagine. Okay. It's beyond imagination. When mind stops, then only those kind of things open. When you are in all the joy, fully connected, so just, uh, just consider this. When you are in infinite joy, all the time, 100% time, 24-7, you are in that kind of, that state. Why the desire will come to have uh, you know certain kind of drink or have a certain kind of relationship with someone, uh, all these things, with all these negative baggages and intent in come along with it. Why you feel that? You know, today also we are having a discussion with one of the, you know, someone and they're talking about somebody that uh, and uh, what is the reason for desire? Something happened. They are, uh, there's some doldrum in, doldrum in somebody's life. Uh, and uh, the main cause, asking what is the main cause? 
that uh, that become doldrum happen maybe you know there is something happened in the, the marriage is almost breaking because of some uh, external elements and thing like that so the question was that why uh, we do this kind of things doing something which is uh, thing um, why it happened so fundamental question is when we go for this kind of desire this kind of pleasure you know, looking for it not i'm saying not doing even looking for it it only thing tells you your connection with the divine is not 100% if you work on that these things will automatically go you don't feel like having into that kind of relations looking the fun into the relationships or drinking or whatever yeah that will go because you are connected you are getting so much high all the time you don't need them they will get drop off automatically that is the holistic living internal or maybe facial expression you will not get anything that doesn't matter you know how uh, people look at you but when you operate from that kind of connection people can feel that my guru ji says about the purpose of life it is about just one foot journey operating system from brain to heart what does that mean it is from your intellect to spirituality the love best thing so okay, if you just able to manage that's one foot down down even okay then your purpose of life is have no need to come back again yeah? so that Uh, you know that you become the uh, all the your life purpose is served and you know there is no requirement to take any lifetime again and again all right with this we'll conclude this uh, session so hope all answers you got and uh, you know, whatever you have been asked there okay thank you guru ji thank you so much for taking one whole session for all my questions really Not grateful best. really grateful thank you Be blessed. Okay. Anybody else having any question or Guruji Pranam? Okay. Yeah. Indranilda, uh, Hari Om. I'll come little uh, after this. Indranilda, go ahead. Ah uh, yes. Uh, hello. Very good session. Thank you. We don't have much time, but I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Yeah. Okay. Carry on. Yeah. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first question is uh, related to the. stairs the example of the stairs that you gave stairs okay so climbing up one at a time it's mm -hmm. a combo question actually mm -hmm. so there is a saying called that sometimes in life in order to progress you need to take a step backward mm -hmm. in order to move forward so what yeah. are your thoughts what are your thoughts on that yeah. number one no 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 let me answer this then you ask yeah. the second question okay yes yeah. so <clears throat> See what happens is it is all about having in the staircase example. It is all about holding your balance. We need to step little back. If you are you are out of balance when you are putting the step to the next step, putting your foot on the next step. So it makes sense to little bit go back when you become disbalanced when putting the foot forward. Okay. So go back temporarily, restore your balance, then try again. Okay. Okay. So similar thing happens in the life also. So whatever you are taking the going back, it is not the going back. It is just to regain your balance. Mm -hmm. So that is the analogy to the going step up example. Okay. So yeah. the second part to this question is, uh, see, uh, it is like a stepping stone. Like you are saying to detach from the past. Let us say, I'll put a very simple question. Somebody has helped you earlier in life. Yeah. So you use him as a stepping stone mover, and yeah. then you forget you forget about him. Yeah. So is how does that connect? Because then you are looking back. Hmm. Yeah. See, um, uh, like there is two part of this. Yeah. One is about having the norms and thing like that of the society. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Follow that norms. Means if somebody helps you, or always you have to use, you know, keep the respect and all. You need not to just like as for example, our professor in our college. <coughs> they help us to get to the study whatever the graduation we did right? mm -hmm. rest of the life we have to be grateful for them okay right that right. gratefulness has to be there yeah okay but it doesn't mean that each and everything you go back to the professor and ask okay okay so mm -hmm. value that but no need to you know physically do anything for that <coughs> so if you keep respect that will take care of it 
Okay. Okay. So you should be respectful and you should be acknowledging it mm-hmm. and move on. If okay. you you don't move on, you say no. I love my my professor so much. I will not leave the college. I spend the rest of my life in the college. Yet, the same professor will be very unhappy with you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It is a so it is all all fine. But only thing you be grateful. You know, appreciate it. You know, and uh, love and gratitude is the best way to give the reward of that. Yeah. So whatever yes. you had from anyone or anything, any system. We love and gratitude for that. That's all. Okay, thank you. Now, very quickly, the second question: uh, mm-hmm. the Maslow's Maslow's pyramid, which we yeah. spoke about, is the basic needs going up to the pyramid apex is the self actualization. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, the base of the pyramid is the broadest, and the apex mm-hmm. is the narrowest. There's a reason to that. Mm-hmm. But does one have to go through all those five steps to reach self actualization? um uh, actually the truth is they never <clears throat> they are always there we call it a mixed bag all the time all the things are playing at the same time only the percentage is different so if okay. you see the missing step it is no such thing missing any step it will be there automatically okay only percentage varies and the different part of the life we give different percentage importance to different things Right. So called, all the lower steps are already experienced, and we are reasonably satisfied with it. Then only the topmost opens up self actualization. Okay. It comes where we realize that is nobody else to compete to. Oh, 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 oh. In my path, it is because spiritually speaking, these all paths are unique. So the competition is in our mind. It is not truly available there. Inner work right. is its own path, and I call it. We all of us we get you know unique question paper to solve. Yes, yeah. yeah. To write the exam. Okay. Mm-hmm. As our question paper is unique, what is the time of cheating and comparing and all? No need. Correct. Correct. Anyway, so when the that realization comes, then the the topmost part, as the question came, let me also say the topmost part will you will get nobody who can guide you there because so unique. You know, right. set of parameters. I am not saying mm-hmm. problems. Okay, own set of pro- parameters is so uniquely your position, then nobody else can actually help you. That is so, the time. The only path left is to your higher self, who knows everything. Okay, that is the connection you get, and then get guidance, and that is the actual true meaning of self actualization. So therefore, you can be at any stage of the pyramid, but still yeah. reach self actualization. Oh, of course. Right? That's what I'm saying. It's all mixed back all the time. They're playing. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hari Om. Pranam Guruji. Uh, while explaining from micro to macro, Guruji, you had said that mm-hmm. we move from first to the subtle one. and mm-hmm. then we move towards micro and then macro i just wanted to know what is this subtle which you were saying because initially what Spiritual. i thought was that spirituality which is not manifested we cannot be um, get it through five senses that is a subtle okay okay but what is the sequence you tell that is after transformation it okay. starts with the subtle then micro and then macro but in the physical realities are just opposite we start with macro then micro our own thing yeah then it gives that uh, the connection then subtle comes and many people they don't experience subtle no spirituality hmm? but to be in one word spirituality yeah that is spirituality so that uh, subtle which we call it that is uh, actually beyond the region of the thought also yes because it is not governed by thought okay it can use thought it can use thought as an instrument like a thought reading but it is not thought correct <clears throat> second uh, guru ji uh, throughout our life as a child one may have a uh, few ideas uh, that i want to become this thing or you want to uh, and as you grow up you have another idea that i want you to do this but once we have reached this level that we are getting this spiritual education now now all those ideas which we were thinking which uh, we wanted to become but could not become 
are they part of our desires today or anything which is deep rooted which we are repeating it again and again become their desire yeah no that's a very good question let me tell you this thing it is all about understanding whether it will remain desire or not that is based on your understanding awareness you can have multiple desires earlier but in the light of awareness if you can roast them they will no longer be there right okay then you you realize that these are the reasons for me taking birth again and again and again right. what is the point i get the higher connections and that takes care of everything even that specific desire didn't meet but it doesn't matter in the light of awareness that small area of darkness has gone there is no need for that to happen anymore yes earlier there was the desire yes. but now there is no further need because i have got a better connection or a higher connection this lower thing doesn't matter okay what i am asking is we have to do something now to get rid of those uh, previous uh, desires or no, they are automatically gone no they automatically gone in the light of awareness so if you work on the awareness those will taken care of right those may be your blind spots those will automatically go when you get enlightened you know <clears throat> understood thank you so much okay all right i think aditi you have any question that is the last question no, we have time no so, not question not question i just wanted to mention today your aura is so so strong okay. it was just amazing okay all all baba ji grace so glowing just glowing okay all right thank you so we'll just go for the shanti part and we'll conclude our session so we we'll don't have uh, the time so if you have any further questions you can write it we'll have maybe next session we'll discuss it further okay all right mm. Okay let us have uh, om chanting and shanti pat Om